Melania Trump was feeling the Valentine's Day spirit on Thursday as she exchanged cards with sick children in celebration of the holiday. For the second year in a row, the 48-year-old First Lady spent February 14th at the Children's Inn at the National Institutes of Health in Bethesda, Maryland, where she joined in various arts and crafts projects with the young patients. Melania looked festive in a $1,795 pale pink coat by Cedric Charlier, which she wore over a matching blush-colored dress. The former model, who donned a vibrant red coat last Valentine's Day, topped off her outfit with pink snake skin pumps that perfectly matched her coat and dress. Melania was all smiles as she chatted with the children and helped them decorate cards and make candy grams. The first lady wore her double-breasted designer coat on throughout her visit to the children's inn, and her highlighted brown hair was styled loosely around her shoulders. She kept her jewelry simple, wearing her wedding band on her left hand and another platinum and diamond ring on the other. Melania arrived at the Valentine's Day event at 3 p.m. and stayed with the children for about 45 minutes. The red and pink decorated room was divided into five stations, candy box decorating, candy bar, snow globes, favorite things, and candy grams. The children at the center sat around the tables, which were covered with pink tablecloths, and the first lady happily joined them at each station. The candy table was covered with red and pink confections, cookies, and a sign that said Happy Valentine's Day. Melania made a point to speak with a nine-year-old girl with a walker named Amber, whom she recognized from last year's event. She walked towards the little girl from San Jose, California, with opened arms and squatted down so they would be at eye level while they spoke. I remember you from last year. How are you feeling? She asked Amber, who has giant axonal neuropathy, GAN, an extremely rare genetic disorder that causes nerves to die and muscles to stop working. During their conversation, Melania asked Amber what she likes to do, and she replied, play with friends. The first lady helped the little girl decorate her candy box and looked for a pink marker for her, telling the other children at the table, she loves pink. Amber was a fan of Melania's pink coat, and the first lady complimented her outfit in return. Melania also spoke with another patient at the table, Danielle. The 20-year-old from Jamaica is waiting for a kidney after receiving a curative transplant for a life-threatening blood disorder called severe aplastic anemia. Several minutes into the conversation, Avery, a 10-year-old girl from Festus, Missouri, tried to get the first lady's attention by tapping her on the shoulder. Melania eventually responded and went over to a second table, which was decorated with a love sign and two dogs as well as candy dishes and a cake stand covered with sugar cookies. Avery received a bone marrow transplant for a rare, genetic immune deficiency and continues to receive supporting treatment. She has stayed at the Children's Inn 21 times so far, spending several months at the center to recover from the transplant. The little girl was joined by Christina, a 24-year-old from Pennsylvania, who has a genetic disease called Neiman Pick, which is also referred to as children's Alzheimer's. Melania helped Avery and Christina spoon gumdrops, pretzel sticks, and other red, pink, and white candies fill their boxes with sweet treats. She went on to help Josu, a 90-year-old from Yoko, Puerto Rico, fill his box before moving on to the third station. Josu is at the center with his 90-year-old brother Caleb, who has brain cancer. Melania also helped pour liquid into the snow globes the children had prepared before sealing them closed and turning them. At a station where the children wrote their favorite things on construction paper hearts, Melania shared, My favorite city is Washington. She signed the heart with her name and stuck it on a board on a wall in the middle of several other posts. The first lady also added a tiny heart for a Washington, D.C. on a multicolored map of the United States. Melania, who has taken great joy in working with children since became the first lady, also warmly embraced a little boy named Imani during her visit. The 13-year-old from Mombasa, Kenya, was responsible for showing her how to turn a wooden clothespin into a colorful clip. This is a big project, Melania said during the tutorial. Amani has sickle cell disease and is preparing for a bone marrow transplant with marrow donated by his 8-year-old sister Imana. 
The first lady told Imani that she will pray for him, and he presented her with a red heart-shaped box that held a circular silver necklace with words, hope and faith, inscribed on the silver circle. The little boy showed Melania his own bracelet, which matched her necklace, and she accepted the gift with an outstretched hand. The CEO of Children's Inn, Jenny Luca, also gave Imani a bouquet of white roses to present to Flautis. In return, Melania left the group with red envelopes containing Valentine's Day cards she had signed. The First Lady's office released a statement on Wednesday announcing her visit to the residential center for the second year in a row. First Lady Melania Trump will return to the Children's Inn at the National Institutes of Health NIH on Thursday for an afternoon of Valentine's Day festivities with some of their young patients. The statement read, Mrs. Trump will spend time making candy grams, heart snow globes, and participating in various other arts and crafts with the kids. The First Lady will also be delivering White House Valentines to each of the children. Before departing, Mrs. Trump will meet with caregivers and families of patients currently undergoing treatment at NIH. Melania's visit to the residential center on Thursday came right before the White House announced that President Donald Trump will sign a bipartisan spending deal but will also declare a national emergency in an effort to procure funds to build a border wall. The move drew both statements of relief from lawmakers who wanted to avoid another government shutdown and a threat from Speaker Nancy Pelosi over the emergency declaration. Pelosi called it an end run around the will of the people while speaking to reporters minutes after news of Trump's position broke, warning it could come back to bite Republicans. We will review our options, we'll be prepared to respond appropriately to it, Pelosi said after being asked about Trump's planned emergency declaration. Following the news, people took to Twitter to roast the president, claiming he was only declaring a national emergency to avoid spending time with his wife on Valentine's Day. This national emergency thing is a pretty elaborate way to get out of Valentine's Day dinner with Melania, the Daily Show tweeted. So I take it this border wall is Melania's Valentine's Day gift? Someone else asked, while a Twitter user named Brandon joked that Trump is just doing this to get out of buying his wife a gift. It's just like Trump to declare a national emergency to get out of buying Melania a Valentine's Day gift, he wrote. On Wednesday afternoon. Melania discussed drug policy and her signature Be Best campaign over lunch with her Colombian counterpart, Maria Juliana Ruiz Sandoval. Wearing a belted pink and white checked Fendi coat with pink mink fur on the cuffs, the First Lady joined her husband in welcoming the President and First Lady of Colombia to the White House. After a photo spray in the Oval Office where President Trump bumped into his wife while the couples were getting settled the ladies split off from the men for separate lunches. Last week the First Lady, who has made anti-opioid work a central tenant of her Be Best campaign, said she would speak to Sandoval when they met. I will have a plan to talk to her about the crisis of opioids, Melania Trump said during a briefing with officials at the Office of National Drug Policy. The two First Ladies discussed the opioid crisis, particularly its impact globally on children and young mothers, according to the East Wing. Melania also discussed the drug addiction problems among the young she is working to combat as part of her Be Best initiative. Last week I met with experts at the Office of National Drug Control Policy to learn more about the harmful effects of substance abuse and the steps we are taking to address this problem, the First Lady said in a statement. We must continue raising awareness so parents and communities can understand fully the harm that opioids are having on our children. My conversation with the First Lady of Colombia today further encouraged a global mission to fighting the addiction crisis and issues facing children domestically and all around the world.